Well, welcome to Sorry if I speak. We have a very special guest today. I'm talking about Abdul Memo. And he is an expert on football. And since the Bengals are a football team, we decided to bring him on. And he has done a lot of research about the Cincinnati Bengals and the San Francisco 49ers who are playing tomorrow. Abdul, what do you see when you see these two teams uh, heading up, you know, going towards a matchup against each other? Now, I know that you watched the film on the Bengals. And honestly, I've never seen a franchise so charged and so excited about the loss as the Bengals are and for good reason because of the kind of the game planning and the kind of risk taking and the aggressiveness we saw from Zach Taylor in his first game what did you see in that game yeah actually um I thought you should have won this game when I looked at the game film on this uh, on this game against the Seahawks and what I saw was actually um the old line was actually pretty solid in pass protection, and that was without Cordy Glenn, your starting left tackle. Andre Smith was um, in place of him. And you only gave up two sacks, uh, so it was a really good pa- pa- pass protection against the Seahawks, but when it comes to, like, the run blocking, it wasn't so, it wasn't so great. Um, you guys threw the ball a lot in that game, uh, and I think it was, like, only 13 rush attempts when I, saw, when I saw the box score of the game against the Seahawks, and Dalton threw it 51 times. Um, a big boat uh, plus for you guys was the defensive line, which was fantastic against uh, Russell Wilson. And he, in like when when I watch uh, the Seahawks games, it's usually like a, you see one of these like, or, excuse me, a few of these Russell Wilson plays where he does all these like magic plays and he just gets like a big play out of it. And you only could, did this one time, which was really impressive. And I saw on Pro Football Focus that Sam Hubbard and Geno Atkins made it on the uh, team of the week for get, week one. And, even Dunlap had a great game as well. So uh, a lot of bonuses for you guys when I saw um, the Bengals play against the Seahawks uh, last weekend. I agree with a lot of what you just said. And I actually had the exact same thought about the Russell Wilson magical plays. There was only one of them towards the end of the game. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I would say some negatives um, that I saw. Uh, there was no run game. Like I said, there was only like 14 run attempts for 34 yards. And a third of it was one Bernard run for 10 yards so that's not really great um and the secondary did have a tough time against DK Metcalf and I know he's I I would that would be something to look at if if you're a Bengals fan because Metcalf is only a rookie and you're going against a lot of great receivers upcoming in the upcoming season so just keep making just uh take a look at the secondary because that might be a weakness for you guys um and there's actually a couple big mistakes I saw um that led to your loss against the Seahawks um Drake Kirkpatrick had like an unnecessary roughness penalty um, for that "quote unquote" late hit on Carson. I wouldn't have called it, but that's how it is in the NFL now. And the same drive, uh, Jesse Bates, uh, he had a chance to tackle Chris Car- Carson. It was like a third and seven, and it could have been like a fourth and four at the Seahawks eight yard line, eight or excuse me, at the eight yard line, which would have led to a field goal, but it came a touchdown. So that's a really big uh, negative on uh, Jesse Bates. And he actually, he actually blew us to his own coverage play for a Tyler Lockett 44 yard touchdown pass. Um, he down, he dropped down in coverage and played the tight end when he shouldn't have. And that, and Lockett was wide open in that, um, in that uh, pass play to for the touchdown. Yeah. And so, so you got the chance to see the 49ers. So what, what do you see, you know, what kind of problems are they, specifically going to pose for the Bengals? Because I mean, Nick Bosa had a, a breakout game, as they say, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, go, um, yeah, go. Yeah, before the season started, I did like, um, like a division ranking of like each like position group. And the 49ers had the best defensive line um, out of the NFC West, and that includes the Seahawks with Jadavion Clowney. So that will be a very big key to the game. Um, can your O-line uh, replicate what they did with the Seahawks and not uh, have Dalton sack like, five or six times like what happened with the Texans on Monday night and um let's see here and the whole line as well for the 49ers it's I know the Seahawks is well, offensive line is, is not good um <laughs> last year it was uh, horrendous now I think it's gonna be had it's gonna be the same thing this year um the 49ers uh they have a very better had a they have a lot better offensive line versus the Seahawks um they have Joe Staley McGinchy um and they're really good solid uh tackles and yeah, I think uh, those are the two big keys. If um, you guys can uh, hold the defensive line of the 49ers, 
And if you guys can pass uh, pass rush and run defend like you did against the Seahawks, um, I would say those are the two big keys for the game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, the the secondary had what three interceptions of Jameis Winston, and, and last season they had two total, which is really, I think it was the lowest since like 1941 or something. So yeah, I think the secondary has improved, but you know, yeah, guy, actually, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, um, last year, um, actually when I did the pre um did my research on the secondary, they were actually the worst secondary out of the NFC West according to Pro Football Focus. Um, that's a set what I uh, used to do a lot of my research on. And um, I know it was they had two pick sixes um, and another interception, but I had that more on Winston because he's a uh, he, he um, he's a poor decision maker decision maker when it comes to being a quarterback. So I would say it's more about Winston than the uh, the Forty Nine ers secondary. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for sure. Uh, you know, I mean uh, Richard Sherman, you know, had a great game against Mike Evans, but you know, can he keep up with a guy like let's say John Ross? You know, and I know. John Ross, they say, oh, one good game. No, 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 no. Look, the first Zach Taylor game, Dalton has his highest career yards ever. John Ross has a breakout game. That is not a coincidence. I mean, he, they, these guys, they're strategizing and they are scheming guys open. And the guy yeah. like John Ross, just, is simply, he just simply can't be stopped by a guy as slow. I don't, no, no, I'm sorry. I don't want to say slow. But a guy, you know, as old as Richard Sherman, I just don't see it happening. You know, yeah, no, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah. But I mean, um, I don't even know if he's going to be on him. You know, Tyler Boyd is our best receiver right now. Right, uh, right, yeah. And you still have Iper and then CJ Uz- uh, Uzuma. I forget. I forget to pronounce his last name. Um, he was yeah, really good too Uzama. last week. Uzama. Yeah, Uzama. And um, yeah, uh, I really didn't think um, the right wide receiving core would be that great for you guys. I know Tyler Boyd was a solid, is a solid wide receiver. I totally forgot about John Ross, and he broke out last week. And yeah, I expect. Uh, I didn't really. I thought there'd be a lot. Of, excuse me. I thought the uh, Bengals uh, was just all about AJ Green, but now they have a really solid receiving core with uh, AJ Green coming back in a couple weeks. Well, well, to be honest, yeah. I mean, uh, it was about AJ Green. You know, in fact, Dalton, if you look at the his, his stats without AJ Green, he's never really been good. I mean, this was the first. Not only was his career high in yards, but this was his first solid game uh, without AJ Green. I think ever. It was, it was, it yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I agree with you. And um, one thing I did see was um, a lot of short passes with uh, Zach Taylor and Andy Dalton. I think that's a new offensive approach they're trying to, to replicate with the Bengals. So um, just uh, maybe that I would see. I would like to see, see more of that as the season approaches, as the season season goes. Excuse me. Uh, more short passes. Um, that way the ball gets uh, off to Dalton's hands faster, yeah. Yeah. and it helps it helps the offensive line as well too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, look, Joe Mixon could play, by the way. And, you know, uh, the, I know the Seahawks have a bad offensive line. The Bengals, their offensive line is weaker run blocking than his pass blocking. Um, yeah. You know, and, uh, and a guy like Joe Mixon compensates for that. That is how good of a runner he is. Now, I love Giovanni Bernard, and he adds a lot, and he will add a lot. You know, and, and, and he's great in the pass protection. He's good in the, the receptions. Uh, but Joe Mixon is something else. And if he can play, with the offense that we saw, the creativity that we saw against a, a, a team like the, the Seahawks, uh, I really think offensively, uh, you know, and then defensively, I mean, really, uh, the defensive line looks fantastic. Um, yep, I, yeah, I, yeah, 100%, I agree with you. So, I mean, I really think we, uh, our biggest weakness is, is still linebacker. And so he, he schemed around it with Lou and Arumo. They just kind of like, we're not going to use many linebackers. It was like two linebackers. You know, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah. So yeah, so I mean, uh, uh, Abdul, any final comments? Yeah. So, um, did you want to do the prediction? For yeah, the please, Bengals please, players? please, please. So, how yeah, yeah. many touchdowns are the Bengals going to win by? Is it like four or five? Or what, what, what's your number? <laughs> I don't think it's very broad by that much, but um, I do actually like the Bengals winning against Forty Niners. Um, they looked a lot better than I originally thought before the season started. Um, actually, this before the. Um, I think it was like probably Sunday or like Monday. The spread started at 49ers favored by two points. Now it's like changed to Bengals being minus by one and a half points. So the bank public is more impressed by the Bengals losing than the 49ers winning because like if, when it comes to like betting trends after like week one, people tend to overreact on people winning versus losing, or excuse me, win, people winning and losing. So it happened in the exact opposite way and uh, the Bengals are now favored. 
And um, the 49ers are actually out a couple of running backs too, Jarek McKinnon and Te- Tevin Coleman as well. And they had to re- uh, rely on Rasheed Monster and Matt Breda. And they didn't really do well against the Buccaneers. And your run defense is really good too. So I expect a lot of passing from Jimmy Garoppolo. And he wasn't that impressive as well. A lot of dinking and dunking uh, against the Buccaneers. And he missed a lot of open throws too. And he had a pick six as well, like uh, Jameis did against the Buccaneers. So, uh, yeah, I and I think the uh, Bengals will be playing a lot more desperate versus the 49ers because the next two games, the uh, Bengals have to go on the road against the Bills and the Steelers. So I think it's a must-win game, quote-unquote, for the uh, uh, Bengals. Yeah, so the, the, what's their final score? Oh, uh, let's see here. I think I have a score. I would say the offense did pretty, pretty good, too. So I would say... 24-17 Bengals. Wow. Yeah, I, yeah, that was actually what I was going to predict that you would predict. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. I'm going to go, you know, I, I think it'll be a close game. I'm going to go 41-12 uh, uh, Bengals. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think the 49ers will get some field goals in there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, so that, uh, that is it. Thank you so much, Abdul. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. Uh, can you share your handle? Yes, it's at Abdul A. Memon. There you go. This guy, I mean, this guy knows all about all the different football types and, and, and the, the college and the, and the professional, all of it. So follow oh, yeah, him. And, the, and the NBA too, if you're an NBA fan as well. Yeah, so follow him. And we're going to try to get him back on the show when John and Hoji are here. They are taking way too many vacations. It is killing our ratings. Uh, we're going to have to get them back in the studio. We're going to try to, uh, all of us are hoping to record the uh, actual game. Uh, game. After the game, we're going to record, hopefully. And we'll see you then. So long. This evening. Bye.